السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ خوش آمدید جی آیا نو خوی مرخ اشت پاتا بخیر اگلے نی ہاؤ جل شمبے وش بلے ہائے گزائی میز گوٹ مارگن اولا بون یور پریویت کئی فحال حال شما چطورے اہلا و سالا مرحبا بونا موچو گراسیا سوابیا بلی کرے آیا تینک یو ویر مچ لیڈیز و جلمن فور چیوننگ انٹو پی تی بی وال یو واچو وال دس مارننگ لاکس ار دبائی فنٹاسٹک دبائی امیزنگ دبائی سوپر Shazad Hassan Khan and Shiza Hashmi. Hello, Shiza. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. And I think I didn't mind you calling uh, yourself all those things because, okay. well, uh. confidence in yourself is something that I feel like keeps you going. Yeah. Uh, everyone. Yeah. And uh, I'm all for that. Well, uh-huh. anyway, how's your day going so far? Well, I think so far my day has been uh, good and great as well. And uh, since, unfortunately, I think everybody pretty much now knows that, you know, uh past few days were a little rough on me but i'm mm-hmm. still very thankful to allah almighty for blessing us with health and prosperity so a lot of things you know uh, within my own house is not actually in the right place so you know getting up in the morning and looking out for your clothes as well so i think it's a bigger task for anybody who's out there you know so i think <laughs> it took me another extra 10 minutes today to figure out which shirt to wear so then i had multiple options shukr alhamdulillah but then half of them weren't ironed and the ones which were ironed didn't fit me because of my muscle growth so So I was like, what to do? So I kind of got stuck into this shirt. It's a little uncomfortable, but it's perfectly all right. Well, what about hold you? On. Before we do move on, I really want to picture a life for myself where I'd wake up and my shirt is ready for me and my pant is ironed for me and my nashta is ready for me. Yeah, well, aren't you lucky, Shazad? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very lucky, shukar alhamdulillah, that, you know, we actually fall in like 4 or 5% of that population. I'm very thankful to Allah Almighty. But then at the same time, there's one more thing which uh, our parents have always taught us and that is that, you know, may it be my success mm-hmm. or may it be the success of my loved ones needs to be enjoyed thoroughly by each and everybody and everybody who are around them as well. So, it can be my success or your success or your success or your success. We need to cherish and enjoy it. That's how it is. And the sole purpose why I said it in Urdu was because I think a lot of people need to understand it in Urdu. Definitely. You know, because half of the time when we see people growing, when we see people progressing in their professions and achieving what they wanted to achieve in their life, God forbid, we have this dilemma over here in Pakistan where it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. And uh, to some extent, it's very right as well, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes. because this is why they say that, you know, never share what, you go, what you're planning to do next as well. And this is because of the fact that people over here do not enjoy the success they will enjoy their own success but they will never enjoy the success of their other loved ones as well so please start doing that hmm. i think that uh, you know with gratitude and empathy we can go a long way definitely and shahzad isn't i mean i always i have spoken about this before as well the abundance mentality that there is enough for everyone in the world yeah. your creator is so magnificent why does it make i mean why do you feel like there's no plan for you yeah. and to be happy in other people's happiness or success for that matter is something that will yes give you mental peace as well try it not to be envious mm. one of the seven sins right <laughs> yeah. but try it not to be that and shazad you know what it happens in the closest of your relatives and while you're clo- i mean i feel like it's also a uh, human nature as well the people closest to you maybe your friends maybe your family if they see you going beyond where they are they will definitely hold something against you in their heart probably not in your face yeah. because they feel like okay we traveled i mean this far together how come you could reach there before me yeah. so it's it's i feel like it's human nature but try to forcefully uh, suppress these kind of feelings towards other envious feelings i'm saying exactly. and to be happy for them yes yeah, so, so you know they very popularly say that you know don't be envious but they use this urdu word and it is like that you know it's okay to rush on kind of somebody's progression as well, which is like praising that, hey, you know what, you're doing a great job. So I think this is a wonderful message for everybody who's out there. Please make sure that you try doing that. You will feel great. I'm telling you, honestly, you will feel great once you will start to kind of appreciate the people who are around you that, hey, you know what, you're doing better and you're doing wonderful in life. And, you know, please, if you can share a few tips of what, what you're actually <laughs> doing. Because this is something I, I can recall from that movie, you know, uh, Wolf of Wall Street, hmm. where, uh, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio is actually in a restaurant and this guy comes over and he's like, what are you driving? So he's like, you know, I'm driving that amazing car. So he's like, what do you do? So he's like, you know, this is what I do. And then he's like, okay, you know what, I'm actually going to call my boss and yeah. I'm going to tell him that I'm not going to work for him anymore. I'm and going I'm going to start working for you. So start working, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. very important. Absolutely. Now, other than that, I hmm. think there's one more very important aspect uh, to it. You know, the same thing which we were talking about and that is that, uh, Shiza, you know, during this uh, whole pandemic time, what we have seen is that obviously there have been disparities among different people from different walks of life. 
and god forbid we all know that you know not everybody gets to or probably not everybody's entertained the same way you know it totally depends on you know how strong you are financially or uh, where you live geographically as well and you know, there are a lot of disparities in terms of health provision so today we really want to talk about today is a very important day but first yeah first of course we need to get a little introduction on the topic itself which is like where you said there's a disparity in terms of where you're coming from your financial background it's not just that yes happens to be a major yep. factor yep, yep. but disparities on the basis of gender or on the basis of social class or yep. on the religion for that matter True. even in places can you believe it it's 2021 is the 21st century and we're still providing healthcare to people on the basis of where they belong to where they yep. come from what color they are it's insane and we need to talk about it we need to fix it and we need to see where pakistan stands yeah. before that let's take a look at this very informative report about well where pakistan stands <laughs> let's do it this year on world health day 2021 the who is promoting a theme of building a fairer healthier world over the past 50 years this has brought to light important health issues such as mental health maternal child care and climate change the celebration is marked by activities which extend beyond the day itself and serves as an opportunity to focus worldwide attention on these important aspects of global health on world health day 2021 the who is aiming to highlight the inequality quality in global healthcare systems which it says brings harm to societies and economies on a worldwide scale rather than solely affecting the places where it is more profound the covid-19 has proven instrumental in highlighting inequalities in healthcare even in higher income countries where those from more deprived areas have been hardest hit by the virus in recent years the countries in the western pacific have experienced rapid economic growth migration and urbanization this created opportunities for better lives for many but left others behind the covid-19 pandemic has undercut recent health gains pushed more people into poverty and food insecurity and amplified gender social and health inequalities covid-19 has hit all countries hard but its impact has been harshest on those communities who are more exposed to the disease less likely to have access to quality healthcare services and more likely to experience adverse consequences as a result of measures implemented to contain the pandemic it is important to communicate about the importance of equality in healthcare services for not only the health of individuals but also for the health of economies and society at large Well, we are definitely observing World Health Day along with so many other member states of the United yeah. Nations. Shazad, before we do actually introduce our guest, there's one thing that really interests me. And that is? This day goes back to 1948. Okay. It's, it's in the decade that UN was formed. It was just a few uh, years after, rather, when the first health conference was held. And it is, well, it sort of interests me in a way that this all uh, organization came together to gain world peace. Yeah. But it is really great to see that world peace was not limited to just wars and stopping wars or ceasefires for that matter. People in that particular platform at that moment felt like moving together is our goal. I mean, in terms of even health or education for that matter. So imagine it's been more than 50 years or even more than that, that people have been working towards having that, you know, um, well, equitable resources of health to each and every single person. Exactly. So ladies and gentlemen, this year around, we are actually observing world health day with the theme that together we can reach a fairer and healthier world and we truly have to remove all the inequities which are there within the system as well so to do talk about that we were very lucky that we've actually been joined by legend over here in the studio you know this gentleman ladies and gentlemen is the talk of the town no, not just talk of the town i think in fact wherever you'll probably go in the entire country or all over the world you'll get to hear his name as well because he happens to be the chairman cardiac center pims he is professor dr mohammad naim malik sahab hello sir assalam alaikum good morning ji wa alaikum salam and thank you very much for inviting me to this program i'm really thankful to you thank you It's very much sir pleasure, thank sir. you very much for joining us wonderful to have you and last but not the least alongside professor dr mohammad naim malik sahab ladies and gentlemen we truly have those forces within the country in terms of organizations or people who really want to make sure that there are no inequities within the system when we talk about healthcare and you know this particular lady who's actually joined us today has got has done a lot of work you know maybe uh, about children out there maybe interventions for children as well you know a lot of things which she'll be talking about and uh, how they're actually funding some amazing projects over here with the help of their organization as well so she happens to be public health expert from the, and she happens to be the country head of Fleming Fund program she is Dr Aisha 
Rashid, hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Wa alaikum assalam and thank you so much for having me on this show. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you and the pleasure is all ours. So let's get the conversation started, sir. Hmm. Professor Dr. Mohammed Naeem Malik sahab, sir, will get the conversation started. So today on World Health Day, first of all, how important is it for anybody out there to observe this day, to make sure that they reach out to their audiences, whatever capacity they have. And not just that, they're talking about all of those inequalities which are within the system or probably because of where we come from socially or probably geographically or how strong we are financially. Let's address that first. So it's very important to observe these such days. World Health Day is a very important day. Uh, you know, the God created everyone with equal rights. Yeah. And health is one of the very basic uh, rights of uh, every child, everybody. Yes. And uh, I am of the o uh, opinion that health and education these are the basic rights which every every child should should get True. irrespective of the geographic location irrespective of the religion irrespective of the sect sex and financial conditions True. Hmm. so it's very really really it's very very important to observe uh, world health day Right, and, and so especially since this is the COVID-19 pandemic going on and since last year, the theme for this day has been around the pandemic as well. I was reading that uh, the disparity, economic disparity or the class disparity has been developed even stronger because of the pandemic. People who didn't have much don't have even more. I mean, they lost their jobs, they don't have anything to earn, they don't have the people who were probably donating to them to, you know, run their families. So in this moment, when everyone does require, uh, well, health facilities for that matter, primary health care we talk about, everyone requires medicine to be safe from the virus or vaccine for that matter. Don't you think, where do you rather think that we stand in terms of being able to celebrate this day? Are we there? Unfortunately, uh, I think we are not at a very good place um, yeah. that we are celebrating this day. We cannot really we look back and we are satisfied with our performance uh, in the field of health care. Yeah. So this pandemic has really widened the gap between the poor and the rich people, rich yes. countries. So uh, I don't really feel very comfortable. Exactly. Same and and so thank you very much for saying that as well, because, you know, for a person of such a stature in the first place, you know, heading an entire cardiac program over here in PIMS as well and being a representative mm -hmm. uh, of a government hospital, I think that, you know, it was a very bold statement on your behalf. I know. But I think that you've done justice to it as well, uh, because there are multiple reasons which I want to talk about as well. So I'm going to move on to Dr. Aisha. And this is something which I've gone through myself. Mm -hmm. So I had a disc prolapse, you know, and I mm -hmm. had to get myself operated. So what basically happened was that over here, every doctor I went to would actually be like, hey, you know what? We, okay, we'll operate you, but you cannot go to the gym afterwards. You cannot play any sport. There's no nothing. You know, so you just go, get up, do your work and go come back home. So I had to tra travel abroad, I went abroad over there and I told them that, hey, you know what, these are my hobbies and these are the things which I want to probably move on with life. Mm -hmm. So they were the ones who actually came up with this idea that, okay, you know, we're going to do something with you which will probably make you more fitter than you were before. Mm -hmm. This very ideology of medicine, we do not have it in Pakistan, you know, because over here, you know, you have a fall, you break your bone, bus ji, isko dubara nahi, aapne bohut zyada chalana, ye kharaab ho <laughs> Or it's probably like, well, it's, it's, I know it's a very weird example. You go to a mechanic, you had a silencer problem, so he tapes it up with your car and be like, hey, you know what, gaadi aram se chalana, silencer gir jayega dobara se. <laughs> so why do we have this mindset, different mindset over here in Pakistan, whereas all over the world we see that, they, you know, medicine over there is enabling them to do more wonderful things in their life. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for uh, your question. I think... So this is just going to be my personal opinion. I'm not going to say that this would be the widely held opinion. I think we Pakistanis generally as a nation are in a rush to get things done. Hmm. Okay. Rather than thinking out in future, we are more towards short-term goals. Let's get this part through and then we'll think about the future hmm. a little. I mean, we just want to get the short-term work done. Yeah. You just want to get your bone fixed whether or not, you know, it, makes it, 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 it takes time to sort some things. And hmm. We're not quite there to sort things. We're taking our time. And that's really where the mentality comes from. I mean, God will just improve everything on his own and we'll wait and see. Rather than a commitment to excellence where we say, no, this is a problem. I want to make sure whatever comes out of my hands is the best that I can do. 
how many people wake up every day in the morning thinking what can I do today better mm. that I didn't do yesterday? Not many people will get out, get out of the bed thinking that, yeah. and that's one they of the reasons. Might not just even get out of the bed. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, to have that we'll option. Do it tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yes, probably. yeah. So, so I think this we need. It's a lot to do with primary education, right? With yes, a lot to do with um, with the basic healthcare that we do, but it's a commitment to excellence that exactly. we just don't have in our country yet. I think I agree with you, but now I'm... Uh, with the with yes, the, please, please. With her permission, I would like to add sure, uh, a little to it. Please. Because there are different fa uh, phases of a disease. Sure. Okay. When there is an acute phase when you have all the symptoms, you are in the bed and you are feeling miserable and, <laughs> and then you get the treatment yeah. mm -hmm. and you are on the recovery phase, uh, okay. on the road of recovery. Finally, there is a phase of rehabilitation. Unfortunately, that part of the treatment is missing in our country. <laughs> We are not really focusing on rehabilitation uh, after the pe pe people have recovered. Like you should have been guided properly about the rehabilitation uh, from your back strain or whatever it, it was. People suffering from uh, heart attacks, they need to go back to the work. They can't really be sitting uh, at I home do. and just um, uh, parasiting on somebody. Yeah. They need to uh, get a uh, good life. Yeah. So th re this uh, rehabilitation phase is very, very important, exactly. and we Absolutely. need to work on it. Exactly, no, sir. And, and sir, we want to build up on this, but you know, the, you know, these fingers we're raising, you know, it's our sign language. <laughs> so we're so fighting you know, for our turn. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, so we kind of intimate each other that okay, hey, you know what, uh -huh. you know, it's my turn to ask a question. So this is, please don't get confused. I'm sorry that we have to. Say it on air, but this is the beauty of life here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> so, making it look more smooth. So, can I go first, yeah, please? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I hate to make it political, but it definitely is. It's health care facilities. Uh, it's, not, it's not equal for everyone. We've talked about that. A certain community of um, Muslims living in a certain country have been detained or persecuted for so long. Shazad, can you believe just two days ago I was reading that their population is halted by human intervention in a way that they're not producing any more of the same race. What? This is, they, because of course the country where they are detained, they don't want that certain population to grow even grow. more. We're, they don't want that Muslim community to have more offsprings or, you know, to grow, grow the mindset. Oh, it's not like the pol polio vaccine over here, you know. <laughs> Too many stories with the polio vaccine. Yeah. No, but it was new. And it really broke my heart, Shazad. I mean, with human intervention, you're actually sort of... Uh, limiting a population, but my point only being that when you talk about health, it should be again equal for everyone. Yeah. We have seen videos of people belonging from different religion probably yeah. being denied health care when they even go to the clinics or hospitals for that matter. So can any, any one of you educate us on what a normal Pakistani, the rights or the facilities that they have from the state? Because we know that about 2,800, right. yeah, definitely it mm -hmm. is, it is pri along with education, Dr. Sab already mentioned, it is primary uh, health care and everyone does need that and have the sort of access to that as well. Yeah. But you know, there are 2,800 about BHUs in Pakistan in different areas, basic health units. Do you know their condition? A lot of them, I'm just going to speak the ones that I saw on my way to my village, they're not operated. <laughs> operated, one thing, there's kettle tied up in them, there's not even doctors in them. So talking about public health care. I think the cattle might be treated. <laughs> yeah, you, it's not Kaki. a wet place, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, there can always be a chance. But that's not, I think that's not where the conversation needs to go. The conversation needs to go that how we can probably make sure that, you know, all of those institutions which are responsible to look after the health hmm. of the population which resides within the country will actually be at par with the international standards in that uh, we actually we will be willing to go to all of those public places and institutions to get ourselves treated because sir it's like people like you you know so whenever it is about you know looking for a good doctor you, you will always find a good doctor from a public institution or you know a public hospital you would never go to a private hospital because you know that they lack on the experience side as well but I mean cleanliness for that matter you know you walk into PIMS you feel like you know coming out the very moment and it's, I'm sorry I'm saying it but it is because of the fact that we can look after the hygiene. Uh, you know, we have the best machines, we have the best doctors, we have the best nurses, everybody is, is great. But why not cleanliness? Why not hygiene? Why, why are we not focused on these issues? Well, this is an administrative issue. Yeah. So I can uh, claim and I can really say, uh, uh, tell you about uh, the story of my department because I really take care of the cleanliness and environment of my department. 
but overall uh, from your conversation uh, uh, i picked up two things yes uh, i picked up two things what are the basic fundamental rights of a child born in pakistan well uh, as i already said their health and education these are the two basic rights and then everybody should have a clean water yeah, yeah. proper sanitation conditions hmm. good environment and clean food these are the things which everybody really has the right to get definitely exactly. definitely and talking about the basic health units i need they should be strengthened because every uh, everybody cannot reach to a big hospital yes the professors are they cannot see every patient True. these are tertiary care units once the patient has been examined and treated at a basic health unit hmm. and they are unable to handle such patients then see these patients sh uh, should be referred to a tertiary care uh, okay. unit or hospitals so in my opinion these basic health units they should be really strengthened exactly the specialists should be available the basic tests should be available Definitely. indoor outdoor facilities should be available and the proper medication should be available exactly i agree with that's you and i love the fact that the state sort of did make sure that beaches exist and that's what dr sabi saying as well it's just maintenance or implementation that we're waiting but i think since we are talking about health day one of the major risk factors that includes well pakistanis involves pakistanis in terms of health is being your own doctor shahzad yeah. i think google. you and i are even guilty of that yeah. if i have I a am. headache i'll just quickly google it headache with xyz symptoms and i will get a disease to myself maybe i'm satisfied to see oh, that probably okay. you're not going to live any longer than 45 days <laughs> that <laughs> happens <laughs> what do you have to say about to that uh, i think that's a really good point and a really good segue into this conversation um, reiterating what uh, dr sab said around this if the misuse of drugs hmm. which is self medicating it it's a big problem globally and, and there's an estimate around study ke if if this continues if the use of antibiotics antimicrobial self prescription continues about 10 million people a year will die of complicated oh illnesses or untreatable illnesses by 2050 and 90% of that burden will fall in poor and lower middle income countries in asia and africa hmm. that means pakistan will get affected we are already seeing a lot of people prescribe themselves drug they'll just go to a pharmacy and ask for a drug or the pharmacist will give them a drug or basic treatment will be given by really high level drugs which will make these drugs fail and we are seeing mm -hmm. some causes of failure since then hyderabad had uh, xdr typhoid where it was extensively drug resistant typhoid Outbreaks. when you say they fail that means that the body body will they stop responding they fail to treat yeah. they fail okay. to treat okay so the 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 microorganisms the bacteria the viruses become stronger than the drug they okay. develop resistance okay. within themselves to not uh, let the drug be effective against mm -hmm. them so it fails to be effective now we are seeing a lot of common penicillin is no longer able to treat common infections okay uh, penicillin based drugs and i'm sure doctor will uh, confirm that when he because he's doing the clinical pair treatments of the yes. patients and this is a big risk hmm. for lower middle income countries like pakistan if treatments or infections become harder to treat that will it become more expensive there will be more disparity there will be more unfairness in healthcare for people exactly. and if we are talking today about fairness if we don't treat control this now if we don't control over prescription wrongful prescription overuse misuse of drugs it will become even more difficult to treat our patients than it has been now and poorer patients will suffer more but just sticking to that as well dr sab of course you can add but where do you think the issue lies of um, again i said we are guilty people will definitely try to be their own doctor but isn't it the seller's responsibility at the pharmacy yeah. to ask for the prescription even if it's the smallest of the medicines well i'm very sorry but before you answer that there's another side to the picture as well yeah. uh, unfortunately over in pakistan whatever is in demand it goes short from the market yes. <laughs> you know the like red bee pulse oximeter which usually used to cost 2700 rupees people have been buying it for 12000 mm -hmm. made with that infrared thermometer you know you'll get it for 9000 or 10000 now made with dexamethason for that really matter yes. you know you will give the prescription but they'll be like hey you know what it's short sir hum kya kar sakte hain <laughs> so i think it's from the both ends it's it's from our end as well good god forbid as patients and it's from the healthcare 
or the health providers as well. You know, for everything, you know, God forbid in pandemic, yeah, imagine that, you know, that all of those medicines, remdesivir, you know, for that matter, that injection, which is being blacked in the market, you can get it for, you know, as many thousand rupees as you want to spend, but you cannot get it off the pharmacy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's just a mix. I think we, we have jinxed it totally. And, and you're people. absolutely right. So it's not one thing. Hmm. It's several things. It is us doctors who over-prescribe. We'll give the biggest drug we can or the most expensive or high potency drug we can for even minor illnesses. Mm -hmm. It is the patients who demand an antibiotic. <laughs> it is the seller who <laughs> sells without the prescription. Right. And it, there is a role of government for regulating prescriptions. Yeah. They, have, they need to hold mm -hmm. the sellers accountable for you know, giving drugs without a prescription. Yeah. And then that's one of the reasons. And so it's multi-pronged. It's not a single prong. And this is why I think people like you are so important and so helpful where yeah. you help us in getting the message out there. But I feel like that's why there's mm -hmm. no solution so far because it's a multi-tiered issue and so yeah. many people are involved, right? And I think I'm not going to raise any more figures No, now. I just, it was a <laughs> comment, it was not a question. <laughs> because now, uh, Dr. Sab, what I want to ask you is because, you know, it's not just the people at the pharmacies, it's not just the doctors at the hospitals, it's us as well. Because every now and then we'll go to the doctor, doctor, sir, just take a look at it. You know, <laughs> we have this mindset it is, it of is. getting ourselves, uh, you know, all of those injections. Because I think it's just in the mind. And uh, it's because of the fact that we took our mother, you know, to get her vaccinated and she wasn't really agreeing to it. So we kind of had to play around and be like, you know what, we were taking you for taqat ka tika and, you know, you'll be fine. And she eventually found out. And, you know, since the time she's found out, she's been ill. So you guys have taken a look at You know, so we have both mindsets. One of them is going to take and you know we have this other mindset as well okay, I, I'm not going to get any medicine in my body yeah. so how do we go about it uh, there are two very important points uh, carrying from her answer and from your question the quackery in our country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really very very burning issue yeah. every street or every other town a lot of quacks available yeah. and you know what people say Ji, iska to tajarba baut hai ji. Huh, I've heard that. What is that tajarba? <laughs> tajarba of killing the people. Oh. Tajarba of complicating the diseases. Yeah. Taking the disease to uh, uh, untreatable limits. Yeah. Hmm. So that is very important that we have to look into. The it, government it, has to look exactly into. Exactly. And sir, I, I believe that Ikrarul Hassan has actually done a tremendous job in making sure that he is going to bring those people to justice as well where there are people who really do not have any uh, medicine degree but mm -hmm. have been mm -hmm. calling themselves doctor and there are a lot of people who are going to them so imagine what's going to happen to them so yes these people have destroyed the entire system and that you know yes. mm -hmm. I think that's what they have done but now moving forward sir you know so since I'm going to you are over here and you know it's very difficult to get our hands on to you in the first place because you're a very busy guy and uh, for that reason what I'm going to do is that we want to ask you a few questions about how people are suddenly getting heart attacks post COVID and God forbid, you know, it's, it's very hard for them to kind of survive or probably a lot of people have lost their loved ones as well because the heart conditions are going unnoticed. So people are focusing more on uh, pulmonary issues, but they're not focusing and the doctors are not prepared to make sure that they have, they make this connection in between whether it can affect the heart, whether it can affect the liver because all of these medicines are having an impact. So let's talk about it. Can a post-COVID a patient be ill because of any heart disease uh, and it's just because of the fact that they had been infected with COVID and then they developed that heart disease. Yes. Uh, as you know, this COVID is a viral infection. Hmm, hmm. So virus can attack any organ of the body. Okay. Similarly, it can attack the heart. So once it's, it directly attacks the muscles of the heart, the muscles, they stop working and we call it a you call it infection of the myocardium or heart muscle. Yes. So people develop myocarditis. They, they'll have shortness of breath, difficulty lying in lying flat, and so and ultimately the, there is cardiac arrest and people uh, die. die. Mm. The second aspect is that, that there is an element of thromboembolism in COVID. Mm -hmm. Thromboembolism means the small clots are formed in the, in the blood vessels yeah. and they will block the passage of the blood and stop blood supply to the uh, heart muscle uh, once the coronary arteries are involved and that leads to heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so what about strokes? Similar, yeah. similar is the story of the strokes. Okay. And another thing which is uh, playing a part is the panic attacks. People suffering, so from, uh, suffering from COVID uh, syndrome, I have seen, seen them panic, 
panic, panicking a lot. Exactly. So that uh, issue needs to be handled, and uh, the, it is there uh, where the psychiatrists have to play their part. Exactly, and, and sir, you know this is a very valid point. I've seen a lot of people suffering from tachycardia for that reason as well. But since I've gone through it myself once or twice, but what I've witnessed is that you know no matter what somebody is telling you, at that time you really cannot understand. Uh, oh, you relax. You actually have to close your eyes, sleep. Oh, bhai, dil iti zor se dhada kare. Yar lag kare. Mar jayenge, khuda na khasta. You know, come on, do something. Hmm. So at that time, it's very uh, difficult. But I think obviously later on, a psychologist or a psychiatrist can always help. But thank you very much, sir, for raising your point on this as well. I think I'll uh, let Shiza lead the conversation now. Since we are about to wrap up the segment as well, I think it's only fair that we sort of bust some myths. So rather, yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong or just mm -hmm. tell me whatever is about, about medicinal uses during COVID. We have to stick to the pandemic. It's not going anywhere, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, a yes or no? Is it okay for anyone if they feel like having the, if they are having the symptoms to start Esomex without any prescription? No. no. People are doing that. No. Every house. No medicine no. without any prescription. Because I think it's that's so a commonly told to everyone during COVID. Now even WhatsApp messages. So that's a no. That's yeah. a no. Okay. Absolutely not even no. a Panadol. Uh, Panadol is a for common use that you can do for fever, for yeah. pain, and aches. It's safe. It's safe for use at home. This is two capsules every antibiotics, six hours. Antibiotics. Antibiotics. It's yeah. a no. No. All right. And Look, what with about Panadol? Let, you know, let's let's clarify as well. They say you know, if God forbid, you're not getting better, so two t t uh, ca tablets. Every six hours, is that correct? So that's about the duration of a Panadol effect. That effect. Oh, six okay. to eight hours. Yeah. All right, yeah. and it's not uh, well. It's not dangerous, but don't overdo it as well. And don't I overdo it. Yeah. Do don't that. overdo is the point. Yeah. All right. Uh, hot fluids is a yes. Yes. Probably. All right, and steam. then. Steam, yes. I yes, I mean, steam is always good. It all, yeah, I mean, it's all, you just inhale it, it's always good. Steam is always and one thing, people are always rushing, and I see that, again, it's probably the psychological factor, especially people of my, well, uh, middle-aged people. They want to get oxygen as soon as they f feel like they have COVID. They're, they don't have any breathing issues yet, but because it's in their mind that it will happen, they want to stay in the hospital and receive oxygen. But let's answer it like this. You know, if the oxygen saturation drops no, from it, 94, hmm, is hmm. that when we need oxygen or from 90, safer side with age? Yeah, so, and you so need it if it's not unsafe. So definitely anything below 94% is risky, but Dr. Sa would be better placed because he's a cardiac uh, yes. pers uh, specialist and he'll be better advising you. Mm -hmm. What's the absolute level? But not everyone needs oxygen. Right. Not hmm. everyone needs oxygen. And if you know your oxygen saturation is low, don't run after the cylinders. Yeah. Leave them for critical patients. Perfect. Okay. And just one uh, last thing, because dry spell is going on in the entire country, so a lot of people are facing COVID-like exactly. symptoms, along with you know bad coughing or even bleeding in their cough. How can we tell apart uh, COVID or the seasonal flu going on? I think uh, uh, any one of you, please we'll go ahead. Definitely be the best person to answer this. Uh, regarding oxygen, uh, oxygen yeah. treatment. Remember, oxygen is also a drug. It's also a medicine. So any overdose of the medicine is not good for your health. Okay. okay. When you are okay with your oxygen saturation at rest, take a little round, do That's a bit of exercise, and then check your saturation. True. If that is uh, below 95%, mm -hmm. then please do use oxygen. Okay. Wonderful, mm -hmm. sir. And sir, one more thing which I wanted to ask since I've gone through COVID myself, and I went through COVID when COVID was really novel. <laughs> you know, nobody yeah. knew about it. So, you know, somebody told me, yeah, AC now on, you know, don't turn on your air conditioner. Then somebody told me, don't turn on the fan, you know, it might have an impact on your lungs. So, imagine it was summers already last year, you know, this time around. Oh. And, you know, I was like, okay, half I was obviously down by COVID, half uh. I was down by the heat as well. I was like, hey, you know what, what should I do? So, Please what would you recommend? Please don't listen to these uh, <laughs> so we can turn on the AC <laughs> comments. So, yes. we can turn on the AC if it's hot? Yes, you and can And if you're suffering from COVID, you fan, can it's okay? But I think it's, I think it's, it's a better time. Continue uh, doing your exercise, your walk, and take a good meal, and take some multivitamins to mm -hmm. uh, just boost up your immunity. Okay. So, mm. uh, regarding your question yes. about flu-like symptoms. Yes. Yes, uh, it's dry weather, and we had some dry wind going across the country mm -hmm. in the last few days that created a lot of dehydration in the people. And uh, even my children, they were having uh, bleeding from the nose. Oh. So you have to go case by case. Exactly. Okay. Unfortunately, in this third wave of when, uh, COVID, yeah. the, there are a lot of cases when the test is negative. But they still have all the symptoms. symptoms and findings of COVID. Exactly. So whenever in doubt, treat for COVID. 
Okay. Don't take a chance. Okay. But thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll actually have to wrap up this segment and move on to another one where, you know, we have this amazing lady waiting for us to interview her uh, because she actually happens to be from a very different walk of life, a very similar kind of work which we do as well. Not just that, she's a mother as well and she's making sure that she's, uh, she's uh, going to let the world know that she's an empowered lady. How is she doing that? Is something we'll be topping, uh, talking about. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with uh, blood from the nose, I think the most popular myth is Ande Kam Coffee. You know, I have <laughs> ha, lesser something hot, So we'll something. talk about it uh, some other day, but right now we're going for a... a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Good morning. Good morning. Young girls in the beautiful valley of Kashmir sing and dance to the soft and lyrical music. Please enjoy the Kashmiri dance. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for everybody who just got tuned into PTV World. You watching World this morning, alongside Shiza Hashmi, Shazad Khan, and today, ladies and gentlemen, in this segment, which we know is a very brief segment, but we wanted to share uh, a, a case study of a role model <laughs> who actually has empowered herself and making sure that her future generations are going to feel empowered and do something of their own. Absolutely, and the, the kind of profession she's in, well, Shazad already mentioned, it's sort of like ours, but she happens to be a newscaster for this very state channel that we're on right now. But the most interesting part is, how did she get here? I mean, is this what she always wanted? Also, Shazad, I feel like in this particular society, being a mother, being able to do sort of, um, uh, it's unconventional job, isn't it, in, yeah. in this particular society. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about that and how to strike the balance without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, she happens to be one of your very favorites. Comes on your screen every other morning as well. Saina Khatak. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome Wa alaikum to our show. Assalam, Shiza. First of all, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Shazad, for inviting me and having me over. It's our pleasure. You know, I like it how, you know, all the newscasters and news anchors will always have a pen in their hand. You know, I like <laughs> it. I don't know. It's they, become like they're a so habit. habitual of making notes. I cannot move around the office without a pen now. <laughs> exactly. And, when, and every time you have, uh, there's a breaking news or you have to write something, you know, you actually have to look for a pen. I, you yes, have a pen exactly. there though. And nobody's willing to give you their pen. Because they don't well. have. <laughs> and now I keep four to five extra pens in my bag. In case. Yeah, but have yeah. your habits changed in term, now that you're a newscaster? Is this your, the first time you're doing such a job? Yeah, appearing on screen, this is the first time I'm doing such a job. And you and always wanted to do it? Uh, my mother inspired me, basically. Yeah. Uh, she has been working uh, as a newscaster since the past, I think. So 
17 or 18 years, I and guess, she was a since 98. <laughs> so, wow. uh, yeah, she inspired me. Exactly. And this thing, uh, initially, yes, I was very afraid. I was being camera shy. But over time, mm -hmm. that thing, you know, it just, uh, it just I, yeah, I overca overcame that fear. Wow. I had to. Yeah. I and didn't have any other choice. <laughs> and now you're a natural idiot. But one thing, Sina, when I was doing news, the hardest part, initially, the hardest part for me, for me was uh, beepers. Because if something happens at the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and then you quickly have to take a call from the person standing over there, what is the hardest part for you in this job? Uh, like you said, the beepers. Mm -hmm. And initially, yes, uh, uh, beepers or it can be like uh, the breaking news or wrapping it up huh. because uh, you have to have the knowledge on your fingertips. Yeah, true. Ooh. That's You have to have yeah. the knowledge on your fingertips. Because the kind of information you get from the MCR is uh, uncomprehensible. <laughs> you know, so you and how things, uh, they are like changing every day right. so rapidly. Exactly. So you exactly. have to know what is going on around the world. Uh, what's going on, uh, uh, on around in Pakistan and... Uh, so I'm sorry, I don't know whether I should do this with you or not, but okay, I'll come back to this later on. <laughs> but there's one more important aspect to it and that is that, you know, we talk about women empowerment quite a lot and I think everybody needs to do so. Yeah. But I want to talk about this mindset that majority of the times when I've seen or heard women talking about empowerment, it would rather be because of the fact that, you know, God forbid they had problems you know, back home or probably they were financially uh, dependent on other people as well. And then, you know, there comes this time when they feel, okay, you know, I have to put my foot down and I have to step outside the house. Why can't we do it the other way around? Just like with the boys, what we do over here in Pakistan is, okay, is to the bada, okay. And once he grows up, he has to work, no matter what happens. You know, so whether it may be for the family, whether you're married or not married, you have to work. You know, this is how we think about the boys over here in this region of the world. Why shouldn't we think like this about the girls as well? Hey, you know what? You know, you're going to grow up, be a doctor, be an engineer, do whatever, but you have to uh, earn for your own self and for your own livelihood and for your own well-being. Do you th don't you think that we need to change this mindset? I completely agree with you over this. And uh, Shahzad, what I think is that things are changing. Yeah. They are, they're changing on a very slow pace, but they do are changing. Uh, in my case, mashallah say, I have a very supportive family. Mm -hmm. They supported me throughout my, my uh, when my career started, yeah. on my decisions. And y yes, you're right. What I think is that uh, now girls, they should be, you know, the, the main focus should be on their education. True. Mm -hmm. That is, should be the, not on the marriages, not on the dowry aspects, just on the, you know, the basic, just like the basic education. Exactly. And uh, I think so things are changing. But it's going to take some time. Exactly, and but Saina, you know? talking about, you know, taking some, uh, some time, you know, um, because this is something which I love about you, uh, and that is that, you know, you, alhamdulillah, have a daughter. That's you, what I was going to say. You're married yourself as well, and, you know, so this time within your own life came after you were married, you know, so this is something yes. we're trying to change over here, trying to talk about it as well. So were you always given a chance before you got married that, hey, you know what, if you want to do something of your own, please go ahead. Take initiative. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, when I was born, after that, when my sister was born, so everyone came up to my mother and they were like, oh, ho, another daughter? Really? <laughs> I know. And they were like, no, you should try again and you should, you know, for, for a son. Yeah. And uh, I've always remembered her saying that my, these two daughters, they are more than a son to me. Mashallah. Mashallah. Not if, I'm mean, like, not, if not more than a son, yeah. they equally, they're like, mm -hmm. uh, like a son to me. And I think that's beautiful and on how open-minded your family has been. They have always been, yes, very supportive and uh, they have always, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they have always said that the main focus should be education. Yeah. And that is probably the key to everything as well. But Saina, you know what? A lot of people right now are watching you and probably a lot of women out there who maybe have this dilemma in their head. They want to do something but they just don't get the push or the kick to start it. So you being a mother, mashallah, um, Arsha is five years, is she? Yeah, she'll be turning five this month. Mashallah. Mashallah. And then having this kind of job that you have to appear every day and be on your toes as well, how do you strike the balance? Because that dilemma in every woman's head who might be, you know, still in that phase is that if I get out of my house, maybe I, I won't be just to my, uh, uh, I mean, the system kids, inside yeah. my house or the kids, yeah, the family for that matter. So how do you strike the balance? Any tips? <laughs> uh, well, uh, for starters, I have a very supportive family. Yes. My in-laws and my own family as well. That's amazing. Like, I, I mean, uh, they've always been very supportive of uh, 
when I started working over here. Before this, I was working in an embassy okay. after my marriage. Wow. Okay. And nice. uh, I'm like, I've never had the those kind of restrictions. No, that you should be taking care of the house, or you should be looking after your daughter only, mm. or you should be, you know, just to, uh, looking after the house care and all. Yeah. Right. So I think so. Having a supportive family is very. It plays a vital role. Yeah. Yes. It does. Hmm, and uh, <clears throat> exactly, and I truly believe that it's uh, as important as well. Mm. And you know, for all of those people who are out there who are listening to us but do not agree to uh, this part of our conversation, so ladies and gentlemen, you know, the start actually will uh, the change will actually start from you. So you know, God forbid, if you do not have a supportive family, you you start to talk about things gradually. Things will change, and I've seen this in my life, Alhamdulillah, so far. Even though I'm not that old, but uh, somewhere in the middle. But what I've seen is that you know things don't stay the same forever. Things will change. You know they'll keep on changing. One way they'll go towards progression. One way they might come towards depression as well. But what you really need to keep in mind is that you have to keep at it. You know once you keep at it, inshallah, in life you will be somewhere as well. But thank you very much, Saina, for joining us. Wonderful to be in conversation with you. And I think this is for the very first time or the second time that you're actually on the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, first and time. Your, uh, this is the first time. Yes, yeah, Sindhi dress looks wonderful. Dhado <laughs> Shutto. Thank you very Thank much you so once much again. Thank you so much, And please continue to inspire a lot of other women and people out there. Hopefully. Well, we still have actually a lot of questions for Saina, but we have to wrap up because just after five minutes, she's going to be on your screens again, <laughs> delivering the top stories for this hour as well. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you learned a lot about where we are going in terms of ha having the basic health facilities. If you're still have any questions or feedback or suggestions regarding that, please write to us to let us know on our Facebook page with the name of Well This Morning. On Twitter. Well This Morning without a G. On YouTube. On YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, you look for PTV World and then Alhamdulillah on PTV World, the most viewed show. <laughs> Alhamdulillah is World This Morning. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And the repeat of this one you may catch at Five past midnight till the next time. Look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you very much.